stories of stealing my dogs and selling them, which she has in the past. Did she threaten that, or you're just you're just bringing that up now? No, she said that. Can you hear us, sir? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Give me one moment here, and I'll call us into session. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. It is Monday, March 18, 2024, at 11 a.m. Two cases for these parties, 2024-391 PP, John McKeithick versus Lindsay McKeithick, and 2024-113 PP, Lindsay McKeithick versus John McKeithick. Okay. Good morning to both of you. All right. Court Good morning. will note that in the... Uh, 391 PP case of uh, Mr. McKediak has filed a uh, petition for a personal protective order. And in the other case, the 113 PP, the, Ms. McKediak has filed a motion to show cause for violation of the petition. <laughs> Ms. McKediak, I'll let you know uh, your proof of service shows service on the uh, respondent on March. 14, 2024, which was last Thursday, that is improper service. So I cannot take up your motion to show cause on today's day. Okay. So the only issue the court will be addressing today is the petition in the 391 PP case. So Mr. McKediak, in this matter, we'll proceed on your petition. Uh, do you wish to render any testimony? I mean, no, other than what was stated in the PPO. Well, you're going to have you're going to have to enter uh, some testimony because I won't do it just on a written statement. So what we're going to okay. do is have you sworn in, raise your right hand, be sworn, and then we will proceed. Sir, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Tell us what you'd like us to be aware of. What happened that you should be getting a personal protective order? So we've been separated. She's came to my place of business, unlawfully removed vehicles. Okay, hold on a second. When you say she, oh, Lindsay. she doesn't mean anything. You have to tell me who she is. Okay, I apologize. Lindsay McKediak had came to my place of business and removed vehicles. She has pending cases for that. From my understanding, Lindsay McKediak also has another PPO placed on her by somebody else. And Lindsay McKediak still has possession of her firearms and continually calls me, threatens to shoot me, threatens just continually harassing me and harassment. And then, you know, she feels she needs a PPO because she's scared of me, but she's coming to my house, driving by calling my phone all the time by block numbers, no caller ID numbers, and threatening friends and associates. And I'd like to say or show and sending mail to my house that says, happy birthday, hubby, love you, with balloons and hearts, okay. with her name written on the front of it. Okay. And she has a PPO on me, but she continually violates it. So I feel like I need to protect myself from her feeling like I have no recourse because she can do whatever because she has a PPO on me. Okay, do you have, you stated that there were various dates that she called and threatened you and things of that nature. Do you have dates for that, sir? Yeah, it was, uh, I want to say yeah. February... Ninth or eleventh. Okay, and what and which what does it pertain to? Because you made a lot of allegations, so I need to know if it was. You say what date? What was what was the date again? I want to say February 9th. Okay, February 9th. What happened on February 9th? I received a bunch of no caller ID calls, and I wouldn't uh, answer. Okay, how how did you know it was her if you have no caller ID on that? Because my girlfriend had answered the phone and had her on speaker, and they commenced to argue and threatening each other. And okay, so her. so did you hear? Did you hear the conversation when they were on the speaker phone? Yes, I was in the vehicle when she answered it. 
and it was on my phone. Oh, okay. And also, hold on, you know, hold on, hold on. There's a lot of things we have to establish. You just can't. Okay. Oh. Did you recognize respondent's voice on the phone? Yes. And what did she specifically say to you? I'm not concerned about what she said about your girlfriend because she's not a party of this. So what did she say to you or make any threats to you? The the typical, if I come around, she's going to shoot me, that she's going to make sure I lose my business. She takes half of it in the divorce because I filed the divorce on her. And also numerous times of stealing my dogs and selling them, which she has in the past. Did she threaten that, or you're just you're just bringing that up now? No, she said that. Like, let your dogs be outside, running loose, and they'll come up missing again, and blah blah blah. Okay, and just, so she threat she threatened to steal your dogs. Yes. And I have numerous text messages from her, threatening to have me locked up again. I'm going to go away forever. Just repeatedly, over and over. And then also, you know, I've had to have her removed from the shop by BCPD to where they told her if she come back on the property, she'd be uh, arrested for trespassing. So crazy. And threatening that if I didn't pay the child support when she wanted, she'd have me locked up. There's numerous calls to Tom Mize, which was my federal supervised release officer where she called and threatened him and his supervisors to do something about me and when I pay my child support and trying to turn in evidence to have me incarcerated again. Okay. Violate no contact. Now on the the letters that you claim were delivered to you, when were the dates of those? This one was March 1st, 2024. And I have the picture of it. It's in her handwriting. Well, this is the actual envelope. This is the handwriting. And then this is also her handwriting and her little messages at the top, whether to cause problems between me and my now girlfriend or just to antagonize and upset me. Okay. And any other dates that you've gotten those letters? No. Okay. That was the most recent. So effectively, if I'm correct, is that you've received numerous phone calls, you've had visits at work, and letters uh, in this uh, particular matter. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Well, and also her unlawfully driving off with the vehicle that I was in possession with. Well, that's that's for another matter. That's going to have to be something that's uh, resolved through the uh, divorce action. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, she... Yeah, she was charged with that. Okay. Okay. Anything else, sir? Well, Your Honor, uh, I wasn't in the state the date of the issue of the original PPO. Okay, we're not addressing that today, sir. Okay, okay. There's nothing There's nothing in your petition. You didn't file a motion to terminate their PPO, so I can't take that up today. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, Ms. McKediak, I'll have you raise your right hand and be sworn in, and we'll take testimony from you if you wish to give any. Yes, sir. Ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, I'll first advise you in this matter with uh, what's been stated only because there's a lot of things that have been stated. I want to make sure you understand that you have a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and you don't have to answer any questions 
that may incriminate you uh, for any criminal proceedings. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. And I don't know if they'll come up. I'm just mentioning it because of what he's alleged. I don't want you to do anything that's going to have an adverse effect on you that you okay. should not admit to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. As to the allegations that he's made, uh, have there been phone calls made with which you have threatened the petitioner? No, Your Honor. No. I, Your Honor, I do not have time to okay. threaten. What, what he's saying is that, uh, again, in the phone call, that he recognized your voice on 2-9, that you threatened if he comes around, you're going to shoot him. Did no. you say that? No, sir. Did you threaten to steal his dogs? <laughs> no, I did not. Did, did, you threat, did you threaten to have him locked up? Um, no, sir, but there was a no contact order on his um, federal... Uh, Okay, no, that's not what I'm asking sure. about, ma'am. Don't go no, off on tangents and stuff I'm not asking. You can bring that up no, later. I, oh, no. Did you threaten that you were going to have him removed from various jobs? No, Your Honor. Did you send him a handwritten letter on uh, March 1, 2024? Uh, that envelope is a service of my response to the divorce and I did not write the message on the back but okay. that's a for divorce so in which I have the proof of service and I have my response right here and in which it was filed and mailed to him in the envelope and that is what that is that is not a letter that is the response to his divorce okay did you in fact as he stated to go to the property where he was working and remove a vehicle that was in his possession um no that vehicle is my parents truck Okay. Anything else, ma'am, that you would like to say in response to the I yeah. Allegations? Just, um I don't I don't threaten him and on these dates of February 9th, February 8th, of the dog matter of any of his his girlfriend calls me. He threatens me. This is ongoing and scary. And very scary on the part of, I, I don't have time to threaten John. There was a no contact order with his um, federal. Again, ma'am, that's not a part of today's hearing. So I don't care about what happens on his probation. Well, what I'm saying is, is that there's no contact. And I'm telling you, I don't care about what a different proceeding is. That's not involved in today's hearing. Leo's, no contact orders. Ma'am, you're not no. listening to me or something because I'm saying I don't care what's happened in his other criminal action, okay? If he has a if he has a no contact order or not, it doesn't pertain to this proceeding. He is seeking to get a PPO. So anything that's happened in some other action, I don't care about. I'm saying I've taken the measures to protect myself and get PPO orders. So that way I'm not contacting him. I am not threatening him. Okay. Anything else, ma'am? I do not write him. I do not call him. I do not have time. I have an autistic son that I take care of and I am constantly being threatened. I am constant and I try to cover my butt with okay. that I okay, call him in the courts. So 
Sir, do you have uh, do you have any other uh, witnesses or evidence to present? Um, no, pretty much just that envelope. You know, she filled out the front, the heart on it next to her name is the exact same hearts that are on the back of the message that she said she did not put on there. Okay. Um, if I also need to drop off, I can print out all the threatening text messages she has sent from her actual number that has her photo on it to the courts if you need that for more evidence. And you can look up the police proceedings from her removing that vehicle that I was in possession of. Okay, from my just, just just to confirm, sir, was that vehicle? Did was it in fact her parents' vehicle? No, they had sold it to my little brother, and then oh, my no. little brother went to jail, and I was using it waiting on my new vehicle. And it is returned. still titled to my parents. Ma'am, ma'am, don't interrupt. I didn't go to you yet, so be quiet when you're not asked to talk. There is a police report, and there is a criminal case against her for removing that that her dad had pressed charges on her because she didn't have authority to go and remove that vehicle. And okay. her dad re returned it back to my shop after dealing with the state police at her house. And okay. Taking it so the vehicle, the vehicle was returned? Yes. Okay. Anything else, sir, before we conclude? No, sir. Do you wish to make any closing argument? No, sir. Okay. Ma'am, is there anything else you would like to say before we conclude? That vehicle is still titled in my parents' name. And um, this is all to get my CPL taken from me. So, and he threatens that constantly because this man has taped me up. He has came into my home. He has beat me, abused me, tried to kill me. And that's why I have PB orders. I am oh. so tired. I'm tired because I raised two children. And okay. I am tired of these. I don't have time for these games. And he is doing this because if there's a PBL place on me, then I cannot have protect myself. And he knows that. Okay. Well, in this matter, the court has heard the uh, testimony. I would state in this uh, particular case that, again, when the court does listen to testimony, the court notes that credibility is always an issue. Oftentimes, parties will allege that another party has lied or given false testimony. However, the courts found that conflicting testimony can occur as a result of a witness's background, perception, bias, understanding, or misunderstanding, that it does inconsistencies do not always determine or denote that a party has lied. It can simply be a matter of perception. Obviously, there's some inconsistencies here. The court, in deciding whether to grant a uh, personal protective order, I can grant a personal protective order pursuant to uh, the sections on uh, personal protective orders, which MCL 600.5. 2950, and specifically, the court can grant a uh, action in joining or restraining a person if there is reasonable cause to believe that the individual has committed or may commit any of the acts listed under MCL 600.2950 parens 1 parens A through K in this uh, particular matter. What happens is after listening to the testimony, the court does believe that there's reasonable cause to believe that, again, that the respondent committed or may commit any of those particular acts. Uh, the petitioner stated that there was a call on February 9, 2024, in which some threats were made, that there was a letter on March 1, 2024, that had some handwritten statements on it. The court will note that also the respondent did remove a vehicle from the petitioner's possession, which was subsequently returned to the uh, to his possession. The court will note that the, uh, the respondent has stated that she did not threaten him, etc. in this matter, that in fact she didn't write on that envelope, but the court does believe that there's sufficient evidence to believe that Again, not only that she may have committed, but may commit. So the court is going to enter a personal protective order, 
which would prohibit the respondent from assaulting, attacking, beating, molesting, or wounding petitioner. Also, that, again, would keep her from appearing at petitioner's workplace or residence or sending mail to him or contacting him by phone in this particular matter or from threatening to kill or injure him in any way. The court will not uh, enter an order which uh, would prohibit her from possession of firearm and the court will keep this in place for a period of one year that will allow you to get past the uh, period of time of your uh, divorce action. Hopefully things can settle down at that particular point. So that will be the order of the court. We'll do that. And uh, then uh, that's how we'll, uh, that's how we'll proceed. I think you that, will, that will conclude the matter. And Mr. Uh, Ediak, you can come down to the uh, court and the uh, uh PPO coordinator, and she'll assist you in getting a copy of that, et cetera. Okay? Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. You too. All right. Let's continue.